Crater Lake Volcano in Oregon, a beautiful lake which happens to be a volcano, the ups and downs of Mount Mazama and Crater Lake that fills its caldera. NASA Earth Observatory, image of Crater Lake. Not every satellite produces the splashy photo-like pictures of Earth. Each instrument in its orbit is designed for a specific purpose, such as measurements of surface elevation like the one here. The data are no less remarkable than images. In fact, they are a crucial component for filling out Earth's whole picture. For nearly a year, the Advanced Topographic Laser Altimeter System, ATLAS for short, on NASA's ICE Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite 2, ICESAT 2, has been measuring the height of Earth's surfaces in remarkable detail, down to about 10 vertical centimeters. The elevation measurement above from Crater Lake in South Central Oregon was acquired by ATLAS on June 24, 2019, just a few weeks ago, and shows that what is possibly the instrument's first overflight of a volcano. The elevation data show the distinct topography of Mount Mazama and the crater lake that fills the caldera. For reference, the elevation track has been laid over a map of the lake and surrounding terrain. The map shows land cover derived from a Landsat-based data set. Overlaid on the map of the topography is observed by NASA's Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, SRTM for short. Moving from left to right, or south to north, you can see the elevation increasing greatly and then more steeply up the flank of the volcano. The smaller scale bumps are mostly treetops. Where most satellite images offer a two-dimensional view of the land cover, ISAT 2 provides a third dimension, which is tree height. The track next crosses Sun Notch, a classical U-shaped valley that was carved by glaciers during the formation of the mountain. Some valleys were filled with lava during periods of eruptions. Others include Sun Notch, escaped that fate. Hikers today can walk through this valley to the Sun Notch overlook on the crater's southern rim. The elevation then plummets hundreds of meters from the rim to the surface of the crater lake. The 8 to 10 kilometer wide caldera is the result of an enormous eruption and mountain collapse about 7,700 years ago. The lake that now fills the caldera is more than 1,900 feet in depth, 580 meters, filling about half of the caldera's depth. Crater Lake is the deepest lake in the United States and the ninth deepest in, on Earth. The lake is too deep to see the bathymetry. ISAT 2 can measure bathymetry, the depth that is, to the depth of 10 meters or more, but measurements of its surface elevation could be of interest to hydrologists. Quote, this transect highlights how ISAT 2 level of elevation measurements provide interesting observations to a diverse number of scientists, end quote, said Lori Mag Ruder, the scientist at the University of Texas and the ISAT 2 science team lead. Quote, terrestrial ecologists would be interested in looking at the terrain around the lake as an indication of habitat quality. Others might investigate the vegetation to link the canopy heights to biomass estimates. Finally, the hydrologists would be interested in the lake level as an indicator of rainfall, groundwater flow, or evaporation. Since ISAT 2 data were made available to the public in November 2019, scientists have started applying it to the mission objectives of measuring ice sheet elevation change, sea ice freeboard, and vegetation canopy height. Within the first six weeks of the data release, more than 350 users made about 500,000 data downloads, and those data are already starting to show up in the scientific literature. ISAT-2 is rapidly approaching one year in orbit, and the Atlas instrument and spacecraft remain in nearly perfect working order. This is what Tom Newman, ISAT-2 project scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, says. The initial data from ISAT-2 and its Atlas laser instruments are ex exceeding scientists' expectations. Now, Crater Lake Volta Volcano in Oregon. 
8,159 feet caldera. Current status is normal, dormant. No earthquake uh, results. I'm reading now from Volcano Discovery. I'll, I'll leave a link below for you. Crater Lake is in the Southern Cascade region of Oregon, USA, one of the most beautiful calderas in the world. It formed by the collapse of massive stratovolcano known as Mount Mazama about 6,850 years ago. The caldera measures eight by 10 kilometers in diameter and is filled with a lake of up to 600 meters in depth. A small island, Wizard Island, is a cinder cone that grew after the formation of the caldera. The caldera is part of Crater Lake National Park. Now, prior to the formation of the caldera, Mount Mazama was a complex of overlapping shield and stratovolcanoes. It's located at the north end of the Klamath Graben on the main north-south trending axis of the Cascade Volcanoes. The earliest stage of volcanism of Mazama volcano constructed at least five andesitic and acidic shields and stratovolcanoes between 420 to 40,000 years ago. A second phase of activity took place between 30,000 years ago and the caldera forming eruption, building rhyodacitic lava domes and flows and associated pyroclastic rocks. Caldera forming eruption of Mount Mazama, the explosive eruptions dated 5,677 BC, plus or minus 150 years. Triggering the collapse of the caldera was one of Earth's largest known eruptions in the past 10,000 years. It erupted about 50 cubic square kilometers of magma and ranks as VEI-7. Ash from the eruption was deposited as far as Canada and produced pyroclastic flows traveling 40 kilometers from the volcano. The Deep Blue Lake is North America's second deepest lake, measuring about 600 meters depth. It fills the caldera to within 150 to 600 meters of its rim. Post-caldera eruptions took place within a few hundred years of caldera formation and constructed a series of small lava domes on the caldera floor, forming Wizard Island Cinder Cone and the completely submerged Merriam Cone. The latest eruptions produce a small rhyodactic lava dome beneath the lake surface east of Wizard Island about 4,200 years ago. Lake Oregon, we are at the USGS site for Crater Lake monitoring. Uh, and we have seven earthquakes in this field of view that we have here. Because when we pull out, we'll only have anything over 2.5 magnitude and we won't get any indication. But uh, we've had seven earthquakes here since uh, the, for the month of July. We had a 0.7 at four miles depth on uh, the 7th of uh, July. And again, the 7th of July, 0.9, 4.2 depth. The 8th of July was 1.2 at minus three miles depth. The 13th of July was uh, 1.6 at 4.7 depth. And the 19th of July, 1.8 magnitude at about 10 kilometers depth, 10 miles depth. July 30th, 1.5 magnitude. And again, the 30th, 1.1 magnitude. And if we go up, we see it's less, it's less. Okay. Okay, so basically we had seven earthquakes and this is the west coast, as you can see here. Okay, off Eugene, Oregon. There it is right there, very nice. Okay, Cinnamon Butte. Crater Lake. Mount Hood. Uh, we're going to look at Mount Hood because there was some activity there and I want to see what's going on. So this is it for Crater Lake. They're able to see the uh, elevation of it with the new instruments, which is fantastic. I'll leave links below for you for this.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.